Lucy, good to see you. Welcome to Pop Alternative. Wow, this is an energetic. I'm gonna have to buddy up my game. I know it's exciting. You know, this documentary is gonna be at Sundance this year. I know all the hard work going into films. It's incredible. Hey. Um, I really want to know because. It's all storytelling at the end of the day, but specifically with this one, I mean, I, I'm curious what that kind of journey is in terms of you want to make a documentary, you find an incredible, you know, subject and story with Margaret. What's that journey look like from kind of putting it together no. and then making it? I didn't want to make a documentary. I didn't want to direct. I had no, in, uh, um, I had no agenda at all. I got this email, a cold call. <laughs> Literally just like an email. <laughs> A friend of Margaret, her best friend and the um, heir to her estate, which was uh, a suitcase of photographs and things. And um, he said, do you want to make a film about Margaret Moth? And I thought, I bet this has been sent out to 100 other people. And I, and I went, I remember Margaret. I remember her being shot because New Zealand is there. We prick up our ears when we hear about another New Zealander overseas, right? Totally. And I, I went back to uh, 1992 and my mind went, yeah, far out. I remember that woman. She's fascinating. And uh, I emailed right back within 90 seconds. I was like, yes, I will find the money. I will find the producers. I, I want to make the story. And um, then I hung up and went, what am I talking about? I've never done this before. I don't know what made me say that. And then I was like, shit, I guess I'm in it now. And um and in that moment, I was so owned by Margaret Moth mm -hmm. that uh, that that the the chain. Well, I was chained to her story uh, happily for um, a couple of years, but um, I could not have believed that it would be here at Sundance. Yeah, coming from my background, you know, I've come somehow in my twenties. I took a left turn into like fancy action television and i was shocked <laughs> believe me it's shocked. so funny it's because, like that that's such a perfect example of Zena, like the fancy action <laughs> what yeah no i hate it i hated all that stuff and it was like every day they go lucy your fight's up and i'd go what again haven't we done enough fighting he's like no every day this is the rest of your life there's going to be a fight i'm like god because i i signed up to do like shakespeare and like hit a gabla i wanted to do it and stuff the classics and then i became this flipping cult character yes i mean even my name was it, my whole life took this weird detour and so i never thought i would ever be allowed at any mm. table of legitimacy and not yeah. that i'm complaining i've been treated very well in my life i've been very yeah, 100 percent. but to be at sundance like my composer buddies and I are here who are on my film are like in the elevator going, because we can't You're at Sundance. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy for you and the crew. It's incredible. And oh, it's funny. Excited. And then later on, because, you know, we did that interview a couple years ago with me, you and I and Renee, we did the interview uh, for okay. Acorn TV. Yeah. And we were talking about like oh, yeah. later on, we talked about like Euro trip and, and all oh, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's all yeah. these different worlds. But like, did you see? Do you see it all as storytelling, or is it really different mindsets? Like working on this compared to acting. Like, I'm just curious about that because it is storytelling at the end of the day. But how much of the mindset change for you from directing a documentary? Well, what I realized about what real filmmaking is not the it's not the story, mm -hmm. and it's not the shots. The real filmmaking that the masters have got is the way to make the audience lean in and it's about every shot you choose and every utterance and every sound mm -hmm. is about making the audience uh what is how do i express this dial in they're they're walk yeah they're walking through a fun house yes you're taking mm -hmm. through a fun house and you've got immersive. to make sure the immersive that experience 100%. that's it that's it so they have an ex a somatic experience of your project now that's what i have when i'm playing a character when that yep. when that camera's rolling i am having that somatic experience of that character in within the scripted scene yep. and i'm using all these other brilliant people and their arts uh tying it all together so that you have a somatic experience of my character which is kind of the film totally. so it's, it's a sort of a weird turning it inside out and then pushing it out through the other side of the the um screen yep. um to the audience to make the audience feel feel the character how does it depend on projects but 
because you do mention you kind of answer this a little bit with the immersive kind of experience but like how conscious are you of an audience member watching never look away when All you're making it yeah every minute yeah every but like minute. sometimes when you're acting it's not the case though right because you're dialed never in. It, it can't be you can't yeah. be you have to be the somatic experience that's your job but in this the audience's visceral experience is is paramount yeah paramount um then you can make it look pretty you make um, and it's it's got to be interesting otherwise they're not going to be hooked but um every moment i'm thinking about the audience's response yeah 100 percent. when you also like put together this documentary and you're doing something that's going to be you know um bi biography and like chronicling margaret with the incredible kind of journey and everything there's going to be a lot of kind of source material and facts and things what is that like in regards to like picking what's going to be in it what like there's going to be a selection process right you know what i mean it's so complicated this film yeah. is deceptively complicated because we have so many different forms of media like we have yes. 16 millimeter film we have very old digital tape which is in the aspect ratio in in three four like television of the 1980s and 90s and we have uh you know new interviews we've got a buto dancer to a dancer to capture those moments when Margaret was extremely um, was in turmoil because there's no photographic evidence of that. So I had to find a way to to make the audience to tell that story. Yep. Um, we've got diorama, so we're using this really old technology, it's so old that it's new again, made by the br brilliant Weta Workshop, uh, world famous Oscar winning Weta Workshop did these diorama from from little old never look away yeah. which is a tiny little new zealand film right um and they just everybody gave their all the musicians are these composers are freaking second and on the sound design is all to take the audience through a really um a gnarly little fun house roller coaster ride mm -hmm. i love and they get, about, yeah. Yeah. they get to make up their own mind about yeah they get to make up their mind about things so i never want to manipulate them to this is how you must feel about margaret Yep. None of that. Because no, I love her through this. I was quite shocked actually in the um we had a screening, like a public screening just to or test the audience's feeling. And what we were shocked how much they hated one of our characters because we love that character. And we had put in a lot of and and we put in a lot of uh vulnerability in there mm. of this person and the audience hated them for it so we had to rethink that because a that wasn't who he was was you know, there any him. talk though we like had at all that maybe people would not like this character or did it really catch no, everyone off guard no because no because he's so uh available and so mm. truthful yes. that he doesn't sugarcoat things and they people don't like that or mm. people aren't always kind so um uh that's the one thing I did retailer because a he didn't deserve that we had <laughs> because we knew him well and because we're filmmakers we love people who are in touch with their dark side and we didn't realize that other people don't no 100 percent. Yeah. you mentioned it being it didn't serve the story it made it about him instead of about my totally so, well it's yeah. just what you're also talking about is like having the trans someone like the transparency right like like the kind of telling it as it is like not telling it as it is but like like tra like he was transparent right he was just you know i'm gonna say because i interviewed a lot of um uh, margaret had a lot of friends who um were on that party scene and mm -hmm. some of these people didn't you know didn't make anything but i would take interviewing a drug addict or an alcoholic over um a highly put together functional human being any day because the functional human being is protecting their their day-to-day -day image mm -hmm. and they are that is boring so you're so, taking a break of interviewing for a bit though now i'm interviewing you you did interviews you're done with interviews for a while right <laughs> what do you mean well i mean no like the doing like like i mean you're not actually doing the interviews but you're directing these movie this movie right so it's just a lot i'm of doing interviews. the interviews what do you mean yeah, yeah, I'm doing the interviews. No, yeah. no, I'm just saying, like, now, like, do you, right. do you, do you, it's like you're taking a break from actually conducting oh. the interviews, is what I mean. Well, I mean, no, I've been doing interviews, shilling for TV shows for 37 years now. So to be, 
doing it for my own project is a whole different That's experience. crazy. And, yeah. And so, I mean, I've always liked it because I like talking to journalists. They're intelligent, you know. Yeah. And, and every now and again, somebody will ask you something you've never been asked before, and that rocks my socks. You know? But that's a cool um, moment too, and people are like, you know, no one asked me that yeah. before. That's the best feeling. Absolutely. No, <laughs> I've ne- and when you have to think in the moment, like, wow, wow, how do I, how do I think about that? Um. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, what we're we talking about, darling? No, 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 it's good. We're we're talking about Never Look Away, which is part of Sun Nats this year documentary that yeah. you um directed, which is amazing. Last quick question. Just a general kind of question. You mentioned, you know, small, like the fact that it's like, you know, a small film, New Zealand and everything. Content's become so kind of global. And I find it interesting because the access, that's my favorite thing about storytelling. The fact that I could watch movies that are created from all around the world, everywhere, instantly. That's the best part about it. Yeah. Is it crazy to look back at like, you know, Xena and look at that and realize how, in a lot of ways, how like it's bigger now than ever before, if you think about it, because of just like, how many more people it reaches and like the clips and everything. Do you ever think about things like that specifically? Like it's, it's actually crazy. No, I never do. Cause um, I was inside the machine. So I don't have a global view on it. Yeah. A little bit like this film, to be honest with you, I'm too close to it. So mm-hmm. somebody gave said something in a review the other day. And I was like, what, what are they talking about? <laughs> I never saw, or like, I didn't realize that we had imparted that. That was certainly was part of my, experience but it's just amazing what people take from have taken from this film many different perspectives and that's what i wanted to yeah. let audience make up their mind how they feel about things and uh anyway the my belief is that if you can make people feel you can make them think and um i hope that people go home and just chew on it later yeah, that margaret will live on in them a little bit and and um uh inspire them to go and be greater than they thought they could be yep. you know because she yeah had everything taken away from her, mm-hmm. oh. everything that she valued, her beauty and her uh, ability to speak and her teeth and everything, and she found a way to thrive. So yes. if she could do that, who are we not to go This is a the- very important documentary. Oh, good, good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some secondary things, are, you know, I hope people think about the value and the dangers that news gatherers in war. Well, that was, was very space. eye-opening. No, no, it's, it was eye-opening yeah. in regards to that. But just kind of like the day to day, and I knew, you know, I knew there were like combat camera men and combat camera women, but I didn't know, like I didn't, I didn't realize all the visuals. Like I didn't realize like what. No, they are alone, boy. They go out. Yes, often, that, I didn't realize that. So, I, but I think it's important. I think it, that's why it's yeah. an important documentary. You are raising awareness yeah. about this, and yeah, Sundance. Yeah. Uh, so it's so great. It was an honor and privilege to speak with you again, Lucy. Thanks oh, so much like for your time. Thank you so much, Peter. No problem. Okay, talk to Thanks. you again. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.